Hey guys, Coach Lloyd here. I have teamed up with Pro Direct Running and Nike to bring you some of the best advice that I've learned over 20 years of running and coaching. And hopefully you can implement this to your training and run a sub 90 minute half marathon, that elusive sub 90. Now head over to Pro Direct Running's YouTube channel, subscribe and turn your notifications on to see more content like this. So the half marathon is a very unique event. It's not in the Olympics, but it does have its own specific World Championships event just for the half marathon. Now it's 13.1 miles or in old money, 21.1 kilometers. Now in terms of the pace that we need to be running to nip inside that 90 minute barrier for the half, we're gonna be running 6.50 per mile and 4.15 per kilometer. And today I'm gonna to be running you through all of the different areas that are really important for you to home in on for your own training so you can smash that barrier. So similar to the 5K video that we did earlier, a lot of that, if not most of it, you can relate to your half marathon training. Now, improving as a runner isn't rocket science, and a lot of the time it's very over complicated. Now, that brings me on to my first piece of advice for the half marathon, and that is respecting the distance. Half marathon, 13.1 miles, 21.1K. That's a lot longer than the 5K, and that means that for our training and what we're gonna be doing in training, it's gonna look slightly different and we're gonna run through that for you now. So the half marathon and the 5K are two completely different things when we talk about the difference in what your training is gonna look like. If you're stepping up from say a five or a 10K looking to run your, th your first half, you're probably gonna be running at least double the distance for on race day. So the first point that we need to talk about is respecting the distance. Now in terms of your training and what you need to be focusing on, we really need to have a consideration for building a higher foundation of aerobic fitness as well as conditioning of the body. Why? Because if you're gonna be out there for 90 minutes, your body needs to be able to withstand activity and exercise at that intensity for that amount of time. So think of your training for your half marathon as building a house. If you're stepping up from the 5K or the 10K at the moment, you've got an amazing looking roof, but there's nothing beneath it. And a lot of what's gonna be beneath that roof is lower intensity running. So that means you're easy running. We spoke about it earlier, keeping those easy days easy so that your harder days of training are more specific to the goal that you're training for. So that's my first piece of advice within this. Keep those easy runs easy so that over time we can build the amount that you're running in one singular run. So when we talk about increasing the amount that we're running in one singular run, it's important that we do this in a controlled manner. Now my advice for you is to increase your runs by five to 10 minutes per week. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna ensure that you're doing it in a controlled manner, and it's gonna create that level of consistency that we spoke about in the 5K video. If you don't do this and you rush the process and you increase your singular runs by too much each week, you're gonna risk the run of injury, fatigue, or burnout. So to recap, respect the distance and respect the training that you need to put in to step up from the five and 10K to the half marathon. The next tip that we're gonna be talking about is how long your furthest run should be in your training. So in terms of how far you should be looking to run before race day, I'm very much in the camp that there are no right answers to this, only wrong answers. That's why when I work with athletes on a one-to-one -one basis, it's very important that the goals that are set out are realistic and tangible before mapping out the training to the target race. Let's look at a 12-week training cycle for your half marathon. You may start off your longest run being three, four, five miles, and by race day, you're able to run 11, 12 miles, meaning that on race day, you're able to run the 13.1 miles. But on day one of the training plan, you're not ready to run 12 miles. So just go into it with a mindset that you are gonna progress over those 12 weeks, for example, and you are gonna improve as a runner, as long as we do the right things in training consistently. So if you're the type of runner that's already at a place where you're running 10 miles for your long run on the first week of your training plan, then that's fantastic. But don't get too carried away. We don't need anyone running a marathon anytime soon, right? Now, your long run should generally be conversational pace. Now, you may have heard that term before, but what does that actually mean? Now, one thing I tell my athletes is, imagine you're on the phone when you're going for a run. You should be able to maintain full conversation at all times during your long run. What that's gonna enable you to do is to keep it at a low intensity. It's gonna keep your heart rate at a manageable level. 
but it's also going to enable you to actually complete the distance that's on the training plan for that day. Again, creating that level of consistency. So you may have seen some training plans for half marathons before, you've seen some runners on Strava training for a half marathon and you may have noticed that they incorporate some half marathon race pace miles into their runs. Well, how do you do that safely? One way that you could do that on your long run on the weekend could be incorporating some miles just at the end at race pace. So imagine you're heading out for say a 12 mile long run, you could do nine miles of that easy to steady effort and then finish with three miles at half marathon race pace. That's already putting your body in a fatigued state, then asking it to run at race pace, mimicking the environment of what you're gonna be experiencing on race day. Now, if you are gonna do a long run where you are gonna incorporate faster miles into it, just appreciate that that's a higher intensity training session, and that should be accounted for when you are structuring the rest of your week. And my final piece of advice is to keep your long run as specific to the course that you're gonna be racing for your half marathon on the day. So if you've got a flat as a pancake race, try and keep your long run on the flat. Alternatively, if you've got a really undulating course for your race, try and get out on the hills for your long run on the weekend. So what that's gonna do is, it's gonna prepare your body, but also your mind, to that race day environment. Next up, we're gonna be covering how to taper for your race, the ultimate taper for your PB. So tapering for a race, what does a perfect taper look like? Again, no right answers, only wrong answers. Your taper is gonna look something completely different to what it would look like for myself and every other runner out there. Now, the tapering period for a half marathon, I think a sweet spot is in and around two weeks. So 14 days before the race is when you should start to look to reduce the volume towards the race day. Now, generally in this period, this is when we all lose our marbles as runners. I'm sure you've all heard of the expression maranoia, okay? And it's actually a word that I have banned within my group chat so that none of our runners succumb to it. We get overstress, we overfocus, we overprioritize everything and anything, and actually forget about the enjoyment of training for our race. If we do nail the taper and we do get it right, trust me, on race day, we will be feeling fresh as a daisy and ready to smash it. So the two weeks before your race, you've got 14 days until the big day. It's important that you do reduce the volume that you are training throughout that period. But don't go overboard. We don't want your body and your legs feeling asleep when you do want to send it for 13.1 miles. So when we talk about what to be doing physically, play around with your taper over your target races that you do throughout the year and you will find the right process for you eventually. Once you do find it, stick with it because it clearly works for you. Now when we talk about tapering for a race, a lot of people do focus on the physical element of our training and forget about the mental aspect of tapering for a race. Now what do I mean by that? We have to train our minds as well as our body when we think about getting ready for a race. During a running race, we go through a lot of periods where we're questioning ourselves, we're doubting ourselves, so we need to prepare our minds for the challenge ahead. These are my tips to challenge your mind in training so you are ready on race day. Visualize the perfect race from start to finish. You smash your personal best, and all the stars align. Now visualize the exact opposite of that. Imagine that the start goes terribly wrong. Imagine that you miss your 5K split. Imagine that you miss your gel through halfway. How are you gonna conquer these potential eventualities? If we prepare our minds for these eventualities, if they do happen during the race, we're prepared for anything that can be thrown at us. If you can do that, you're physically ready, you're mentally ready, now it's just you against the clock. So guys, they've been my top tips and advice on how you can run a sub 90 minute half marathon in your next race with ProDirect Running. So for more content like this guys, head over to the ProDirect Running YouTube channel, subscribe so you don't miss a beat, and for the latest running gear so that you're confident on the line next time out, head over to ProDirectRunning.com.